Well, thank you guys, obviously, for sort of having us here today. We're excited to tell you a little bit about the work that Joby's been doing really for the greater part of a decade. A lot of that work has really been focused on the video that you see here. So this is the aircraft that the company has de been developing for the greater part of a decade. So this is a flight test <clears throat> actually at our facility here in California. You'll see our aircraft. Uh, this is a full-scale aircraft taking off uh, essentially vertically like a helicopter and then beginning to transition into forward flight. So you'll see the propellers tilt from 90 degrees during takeoff and land down to zero degrees in forward flight. And that transition is really critical in terms of delivering greater range and faster speed than would be possible with just a scaled up drone design or conventional helicopter design on the other side. So it's really that architecture that allows us to deliver a set of performance metrics that we think are really best in class for this brand new category of vehicle. Um, so obviously you'll now see the vehicle in its forward flight mode, and then at the tail end sort of come in for detransition and land. And to put this into perspective, almost every component on this aircraft was designed and developed internally. There wasn't a supply chain to go to for a lot of the components that are necessary to make this aircraft work. So Joby had to do the hard work over an extended period to kind of make that happen. And I'll say that we're really pleased now about the performance of the aircraft through most of the modes of flight. It's hitting all of the specifications that we set out to hit eight plus years ago. And it's now in turn, as we'll sort of talk about, kind of ready for certification and commercialization. So before we kind of step back from uh, the vehicle, it's worth talking a little bit about our approach to go to market, which I think is very different from some of the other companies that are out there today. From the get-go, Joby always believed that the right way to commercialize this brand new mode of transportation was to not only develop the vehicle and certify the vehicle, uh, manufacture the vehicle, but actually operate the aircraft and deliver the service directly, or at the very least indirectly to consumers on the other side. So Reed Hoffman, our partner, obviously in the transaction, is sort of called the business model, sort of Tesla meets Uber for the air. And that's a pretty pithy way of sort of kind of describing how we're gonna end up delivering this. In designing the vehicle, there were really three core goals. First, ensuring that it was safe. Second, ensuring that it was quiet. And third, ensuring that the specs of the vehicle, the range, the speed were all really optimized to deliver an increasingly affordable service and a profitable service to end consumers. So by the numbers, the aircraft that we're now flying is hitting the following. 150 miles of range on a single charge, a 200 mile per hour nominal cruise speed, so significantly faster than helicopters that are out there today. Five seats, a pilot, and then four passengers sitting behind. An extremely low noise profile that's less than 65 decibels at 100 meters during takeoff and land, and then near silent at 500 feet to 1,000 foot flyover. And finally, an architecture that's designed for really zero single points of failure. So redundancy in terms of the overall vehicle design, and then redundancy in the subsystems. And our attempt is to bring this kind of level of safety that's associated with large commercial aircraft brought now to a small vehicle. Um, and it's worth highlighting that this noise profile is really important. Um, it sat just behind safety in terms of our priority set, because we think that by having a low noise aircraft, that's gonna be the unlock the, that allows you to fly high frequency, high volume operations in and around cities, and take advantage of existing helipad infrastructure and provision new infrastructure far more quickly. Um, so sometimes folks have thought that, all right, and if the aircraft is electric, it's, it's gonna be quiet, but that's not necessarily the case. You have to be really thoughtful about the design of the propellers, the speed at which you're spinning them, the geometry of those propellers to really bring down the prop component of noise too. And that's some of the careful work that this team has done over a really long period. And we're certainly very pleased with the results that we have. Moving then from the aircraft to the certification effort, that's the other sort of principal area that we've, that we've spent a lot of time over the last stretch. So we've had informal conversations with the FAA for almost four years. We've been in a formal process with the FAA for two years. And we received an important milestone in that effort just last year with our receipt from the FAA of what's called the G1 issue paper. So certification is certainly um, a complex subject. And obviously I think we're gonna be answering some more questions about that down the line. But to give you some context, the G1 is kind of roughly an agreement on the set of tests that need to be done at the component level and then at the vehicle level to prove the safety of the aircraft and receive type certification. So you can think about it as sort of the blueprint of what you need to do to certify the aircraft. And it took obviously two years of really close work with the FAA to kind of get to that point. And now we have a really clear path that we need to follow over the next three years to get that done. So that's gonna be a hard effort, a really hard program management effort, but 
it's a path that's now really clear. And that's actually part of the reason why we kind of now feel far more comfortable beginning to describe the steps that are going to uh, happen over the next three years to get to commercialization. And those are, in short, the following. We're going to be very tailor, uh, laser focused on really three areas. First, the development, uh, the certification of our aircraft with the US FAA by the end of 2023. Second, demonstrating the ability to produce these vehicles repeatedly with a target for production certification in early 2023. And third, we're going to be laying the groundwork for initial com commercial launch in 2024 in one to two cities, and then also doing some early work with the DOD throughout that 21 to 2023 period. So each of those efforts, I think, are things that we are certainly laser focused on, and the broader investment community should be focused on go forward. Moving now to the business, it's worth sort of touching on the unit economics, because this has been an area that JB and I um, have been obsessed about from day one. And actually, all of the specifications of the vehicle, the range of the vehicle, the speed of the vehicle, minimizing the amount of time that it's charging, have all really been with this sort of unit economic model in mind. And fundamentally, it's about maximizing the number of passenger seat miles that you can deliver per given unit of time, because that's what lets you, lets you get to an affordable price point from day one, and then drive that price point down over time while still maintaining profitability. So on this slide, you can see the contribution margin and payback period in 2026 in our estimates. Um, and as you can see, that payback period is roughly a little bit over a year in that period. And then on the right side, you can see a sensitization of that against different passenger load factors across the service at the top, and then different fully burdened aircraft costs on the side. And as you can see, there's a, there's a fair bit of flex and a fair bit of margin ensuring that we can deliver each new aircraft into the service and have a strong payback period um, over the long run. In terms of our overall business plan, the, the raise that we announced, obviously, in conjunction with the folks at RTP, provides a little under $2 billion in sort of net capital post-transaction. And that's going to allow us to do three things. Obviously, execute on our certification plan, scale up our initial phase one kind of manufacturing, and then begin to kind of lay the groundwork for commercial service in 2025. Um, so we feel really good, obviously, about the capital that we have and the resources that we have to deploy against those three efforts over the next stretch. It's worth sort of ending a little bit, obviously, before we opened up with Q&A in terms of what the overall goal of the company is. This is not just about building an aircraft, but it's really about delivering a brand new mode of transportation to folks. One that saves them time, one that, one that gets them to their destination five to ten times faster, does that at similar cost to driving over the, on the ground, and fundamentally does that with zero emissions. So it's really about providing passenger utility, but also doing that in a way that is sustainable. And our goal is to sort of save a billion people an hour a day. And we think we've got an opportunity to do that over kind of the next decade. But in the near term, obviously the goals are gonna be certify the aircraft, scale up that manufacturing, and make sure that we can really demonstrate strong commercial launch in some of those few markets. And as reference from the outset, we've got a number of great partners to do that work. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but. Obviously, um, we had a large investment from Toyota last year. And in addition to that investment, they're also providing engineering resources to help us design and plan for our manufacturing scale. Uh, John had alluded to our work with Uber. Uh, we had an opportunity to bring over the Uber Elevate team. This was the group inside of Uber that was working on aerial ride sharing efforts and really an opportunity for us to accelerate our go-to-market planning. And then finally, we've got a strong partnership with the DOD that provide both near-term revenue opportunity and even more importantly, an opportunity to learn early before commercial launch in 2024. 